Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody is having an amazing day. So I apologize for taking yesterday off. I have recently added a bunch of new stuff to my 3D printing business and I had to take the time to add it to the printers so I don't lose it in the shuffle, you know. So will you guys help me take a second and welcome our newest members, Tawny and Nayade Cardenas. And I really hope I said both of those names correctly. Okay, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's just get straight to the story. Okay then, so today's episode takes place in the small town of Milo in Douglas County, Oregon. Apparently, Google says that Milo is unincorporated, so that means it's too small to be a town. But I'm sure you guys get it. Hi, Leslie. I just discovered your channel about a month ago. I never realized that these channels were a thing. Otherwise, I would have started listening to your channel way back when you first started. Anyway, just so you know, I've always believed in Bigfoot. But the funny thing was, I never realized so many people didn't believe in Bigfoot. Bigfoot conversations just never really existed. So here's a piece of important information. I had been working on my van and decking it out so that I could live in it one day. I was planning on seeing more of the country that I loved while I was laid off for three months of every year. Plus, I played with the idea of starting a YouTube channel. My buddy Tim, who was an amazing contractor, got me a lot of the materials for cost and he helped me build most of my van. I was taking my van out for little tests here and there just to make sure that we weren't missing anything. I still had about a month left before I was laid off for the last three months of the year, which was perfect because I planned on using the next month's income to live off of for the next three months while I was laid off. So we were pretty much just doing the last finishing touches when I got laid off a month earlier than usual. But it's funny how things have a way of happening. A week later, I got a call from Tim asking if I could possibly help him out. He asked if he paid me, could I drive him from Boise, Idaho, where we lived presently, to Milo, Oregon. It was easily 500 miles. But I said, well, let me get this straight. You're paying for everything? I knew he had a decent job, but to offer to pay for the whole thing, groceries and gas, that didn't make sense to me. So I said, why? What's in Milo? He said, my grandfather is in Milo and he fell and broke his leg and he needs help because he has issues with hoarding and the nurses won't go into his house because it's a disgusting mess and he's not willing to go somewhere else to heal. So my mom asked if I'd be willing to go out there and stay with him. And of course I want to help my grandfather, but I don't relish the idea of going into his house either because it's bad. Believe me, we've done everything that we can think of to get him help but he doesn't see the issue. So my mom suggested that I ask you, since you're laid off now. My mom called her dad, and he said he would be more than willing to pay us if we drove up there in your van and then stayed in your van for probably a month. So I thought about it for a second, and, and of course I wanted to help my friend. But to be paid as well was perfect. So, three days later, true to Tim's grandfather's word, he sent us a knee transfer to pay for our gas and food, and we left. Now, beside the odd stop here and there, we basically pulled into Tim's grandfather's the very next morning. Because it was so early, we decided to just get a few Z's ourselves until Tim's grandfather got up, and then we would assess the situation and start doing what needed to be done. Then about 40 minutes or so later, there was a knock at the side door and Tim and I just looked at each other. He opened the door and there was Grandpa. He introduced himself to me as Jacob 
but said I would prefer it if you would just call me Grandpa, just like Timmy. So I said, all right there, sir, I'll call you Grandpa. Grandpa was standing there on crutches, and he said, why weren't you coming in? You could have just knocked, you know. We said, well, we didn't want to wake you up. So Tim said, why don't we all go sit down at the picnic table in the backyard there, and we can chat some more. So we helped him over to the picnic table and sat down and started talking about what happened. Grandpa started to explain. He said, I know you boys aren't going to believe me, but somehow I fell off the tractor and it rolled over top on my leg and then stopped. He said, I laid there for a good hour when I must have fallen asleep. I'm not sure, but I came to when I felt the tractor being lifted off my leg. And then I felt something grab me on the back of my shirt and pull me out from under the tractor. Then, a little while later, I heard the delivery truck pull up outside and I yelled for help. And sure enough, he came running around to the back of the house and he called the ambulance for me and stayed with me until they arrived. And that's the story. Then, just as I was about to say, wait a minute, who, how, he interrupted me and he started telling us about these three or four nurses that refused to stay because he's not exactly the cleanest person. Then I went to open my mouth again to question Grandpa about the tractor, like who lifted it off of him and who pulled him out. But Tim gave his head a shake and said no. Then a little while later, Tim said, He's a little concerned that his grandfather is maybe going a little senile because of the condition of his house. So we should just maybe put that on the back burner for now. So we just didn't talk about it. But man, on my word, that house was putrid. I could smell the house in the backyard sitting out there. But the backyard itself was pristine. But like I said, the house was another issue. After a while, Grandpa said he was getting tired, so Tim helped him into the house. I wasn't going to go inside that house. There was no way. Then when Tim came back out, he said, Oh my God, it's bad, really bad. He said, There's no way we're going to be in there cooking meals for him. There's no way. We'll cook all the meals in the van or on the barbecue, but we're not going to go in there and eat. I was fine with that. I pulled out my papers and my pot, and I went to roll a joint. And Tim said, oh my God, yeah, that's another thing. That's going to be an issue. I said, what do you mean? He said, my grandfather will not have that on his property. I said, okay, so what do you mean? We're going to have to go for a walk or something? And Tim nodded his head. I was fine with that. So Tim and I took a walk in the woods so I could smoke my joint. Tim's not much for smoking pot, but in the blue moon he might take a drag, but not that often. So we pretty much laid around all day. The only thing we really needed to do was cook meals and help him get dressed if he was having a struggle. I was pretty useless because Tim was pretty much doing everything for Grandpa. I mean, I helped cook, but that's it. There was a lot of free time on our hands. So I noticed the first night that the farmer across the road had a lot of those tall, heavy-duty lights all around his farm. They looked like street lights, but just not maybe as tall. So that night, after we fed Grandpa and got him comfortable on the couch, Tim and I walked down to the end of the driveway to smoke a bedtime spliff. This time, we didn't walk all the way down the road. We just went to the end of the driveway and then stepped behind a tree so we were out of sight if Grandpa looked out the window. We were standing there talking quietly when all of a sudden Tim says to me, Holy crap, what the hell is that? So I look across the road and I saw two huge human shapes walking or sneaking, I should say, along the side of the big barn. They were completely lit up by these enormously tall streetlights. When they were sneaking along the side of the barn, you could see that they were large, but definitely not all the details. 
And then they crossed over to a shed, like a garden shed. And they were at least a foot to two feet taller than the roof of that shed. And the two of them that were side by side literally hid the whole shed. You could tell that they were not humans, but they were giants of some kind. But they were shaped like two humans. For some reason, Bigfoot didn't come to mind at all that night. But we stood there, barely able to move or willing to move. We were watching them sneaking around from building to building. And then we heard some kind of language. They didn't seem to be afraid of being heard. But then all of a sudden, they started running towards the road. Tim and I stepped back behind the trees and prayed to God that they didn't see us. We were only about 45 to 50 feet from them, and they crossed over the road, and we kept praying, please, 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 God, don't come towards us. Luckily, they didn't even try. They just ran straight into the woods. Once they were out of sight, we ran up the driveway and jumped in the van. Funny enough, the whole time I was still holding on to that spliff till we got in the van, but it was long out. Both Tim and I kept saying, holy crap. And then all of a sudden he said, what do you bet they were Bigfoot? I bet that's what they were, Bigfoot. And I was so stunned, I just stood there nodding. After that, I never left the van without my weapon in its holster on my side. Tim didn't carry, but the next morning he asked his grandfather if he had an extra pistol that Tim could use while we were there. He told them that we had seen some kind of weird animal the night before, and he was a little concerned that he didn't have a weapon. Grandpa grilled him to find out what it was that we seen, but Tim wouldn't tell him because we were pretty sure that he wouldn't believe what we saw. Later that evening, Grandpa called Tim on his cell phone and said, why don't we eat dinner together on the picnic table? So we thought, okay, that's a great idea, because we had started feeling bad that we weren't spending any time with Grandpa at all. As soon as we sat down, Grandpa said, I need to know what kind of animal that you guys saw last night. And Tim honestly gave his best shot to lie. But then he just said, Grandpa, we're not sure. We think we may have seen two Bigfoot. Grandpa took a deep breath and nodded his head. He said, all right, listen, you guys, you can't shoot them. You can't even shoot at them. And you definitely can't kill them. Tim and I were confused. We were looking at him. And Tim said, Grandpa, have you seen them? They could easily kill us. And Grandpa said, yep, yep, son, they could. But they could also save us too. And he just sat there and stared at Tim. And Tim wasn't getting it. But all of a sudden, I did. I said, were they the ones that lifted the tractor off your leg and pulled you out from under the tractor, Grandpa? And Grandpa said, yep, you got it, son. That's what helped me. As for Tim, you couldn't have lifted his jaw off the table. Finally, he said, are you serious? Are you joking, Grandpa? Grandpa said, no, I'm dead serious. He said, I've seen them around here a lot especially in the last few years. They just watch me from the woods, mainly. They don't really do anything to hurt us. And then he said, actually, that might not be completely true. There's a little rumor going around that maybe they may have killed one of the donkeys from across the road. But to be honest, that donkey would have attacked them, and they were probably only trying to defend themselves. I'm being honest when I say... I've seen that donkey square up to a 4,000-pound bull. It didn't back down. Anyways, I was going to ask you boys if you could go out and shoot some rabbits for me so I can give them to those Sasquatch as a thank you for saving my life. I said, absolutely, and Tim was still in shock. Then, all of a sudden, Grandpa said, Hey, boys, I think we've got company. But before I could turn to look, Grandpa reached over and grabbed my hand and said, No, you have to do it so they don't know that you're doing it. They don't like it when we look at them. So you have to be kind of nonchalant about it. Just casually look over your left shoulder. 
and I did, and that's when I saw it. There was a black shadow just behind the tree line. Then Tim finally came to his senses, and he casually looked over as well. And he said, oh my God, those things are so giant. He said, Grandpa, have they been here for a long time? And Grandpa said, I believe they started coming around here a few years ago. But they don't take anything from me that I'm aware of. So we kept peeking over at them and and we never, not even one time, considered taking a picture. And yes, I'm definitely one of those people that says, why don't you get a picture? And I'll tell you why. For some reason, you don't think about it. The next day, Tim and I got up early and we went to a field that Grandpa told us about and we were able to get six rabbits. There were so many of them, they were popping up and down like popcorn. When we got home, Grandpa instructed us on how to tie them all together by their back feet and then hang them on a branch in a tree, the same tree right where I'd seen them standing the night before. And that night, I got the idea that I was going to record them with my phone. I set the phone on the dashboard of the van, pointing it at the tree and the rabbits were no more than 10 feet from the phone. It was the perfect location to hopefully get a video. So Tim and I were in the back of the van watching a video, and every now and again, we'd get up and just casually look to see if the rabbits were still there. Sure enough, they were. Then I'd go back to watching the video with Tim. Then eventually, we both dozed off, Tim said he fell asleep and woke up when he felt the van moving, but he wasn't sure. He checked the clock and it said 1.30 a.m. He went to check and see if the rabbits were still there, but he said it was too dark. So he flashed the headlights on and he said the rabbits were gone. So he turned my cell phone off and went to sleep in the front seat. Now, this is the craziest part. I was so excited because I was positive we got them on video. I went through the whole thing, bit by bit, forward it, forward it, forward it. I caught everything. Then, all of a sudden, the camera started to shake. Then you could see the video shake really hard. Then you just catch the last bit of the rabbits being pulled off the tree branch and then disappear. You hear Tim walking from the back of the van to the front. He flipped the lights on, and then the camera got picked up, and that's when Tim turned the camera off. So I honestly believe that something purposely shook the van, and it did that so that the camera would move and not catch them pulling the rabbits off the branch. They had to know, and if they didn't, It was the most amazing coincidence I have ever heard of. So we ended up staying up there for five weeks and we took Grandpa to all his appointments and finally got the cast off. He offered to let us stay there if we wanted and he said he would pay us to help him around the farm. But it wasn't really a farm anymore as he'd gotten rid of all the animals and he hadn't had a garden planted in a couple of years. But we told him we would think about it and let him know. But we did make it a point to get out there to visit him at least once a month. And we always stayed the whole weekend. We were able to convince him to let a crew of people go in and declutter his house. It didn't take long for him to start building up the crap again. That's just how he liked it, I guess. One of the good parts of going to Grandpa's is definitely watching out for the Bigfoot. Grandpa swears that they leave every winter and come back every spring. And who's to know? Maybe he is right. So that's the story of how two Bigfoot saved Tim's Grandpa. I hope you can use it. Please let me know if you need more details. And it's signed, Mr. Jones. Okay, guys, I think that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I did. I hope you all have an amazing evening, and we'll see you back here in a day or two. 
You know I love ya. Bye for now.